Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. So we are here at Linea Pelle Now and Together. Our new edition of uh, talking about um, all the, the different visionary person to our social community. So uh, we are very, very glad that we are at least at our fifth weeks. So, and we have a lot of people subscribing and listening what we want to tell to you also today. First of all, we have our mantra. Our mantra is let inspire you. What this really means. This means that we share opinions with people from all around the world, of course, also from Italy. But today, the topic that we are talking about, it's a kind of very tricky point. So let me introduce you the today's speaker who are Matteo Cilic, Italian transmedia artist and designer. Matteo, welcome. Good morning, Orita. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Yes. And we also have Mirko Cara, stylist in leather, entrepreneur in leather. Good morning, Mirko. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, Orietta. Nice to be here to meet with us. Great, great. Uh, I'm really pleased to have you here, even because this week we are starting this uh, new talking about made in Italy, but in a very different way, made in Italy in a most this, uh, let me say, disruptive way, a visionary way to redesign and reshape made in Italy. So it's a kind of behind the scene, the making of, of one of the icon products. So now, Let's start with Matteo, because I really would like that Matteo introduce what does it mean to be a visionary designer. Let's go, Matteo. This is your turn. Thank you, Rita, for the fantastic introduction. Um, well, I'm a designer. Um, I grew up in Italy. And um, since I was 10, I started designing objects and uh, producing them with uh, craftsmen around my town. I produce a lot of object in uh, ceramic, then in glass. And uh, later on with fabric, I started as well a fashion company later when I was uh, 25. My production is quite wide. You'll uh, see within my portfolio, different uh, products that, that have a, 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 some peculiarity. The, all of them has and hybrid function. So uh, my, um, my work is about creating icons, uh, which are objects that have hybrid function. Here you see some of them, collection of rugs on the top left by uh, Scarlet Splendor, uh, as well on the bottom right, uh, another collection always for this, Ita this Indian luxury brand um, called Scarlet Splendor, all made in, in lay of resin. In the center, you see a collection called Basonazo. It's a project that I've been doing for one year, and every day for one year, I've been doing a base with the nose. In the previous uh, slide, just to have a panorama overview um, of my work, uh, you were seeing a, a chocolate bar, a terrarium, the one in the middle, uh, with this kind of uh, a cactus head terrarium that is a kind of best friend that you hold in your desk and suggest you how to have best practice every day. On the bottom left, uh, this dream is a collection of ceramic uh, with 24 karat uh, gold. Uh, and it's a collection, a base tree of animals that uh, populate my mind uh, in the night. Uh, while in the bottom right is a bar and a study table uh, made in leather and, uh, and this kind of fringe of, uh, of leather, of uh, denim. So that's just to have a to to show off what's my work about it's very uh very wide and if we go on in we'll see uh, like a, a custom project i've been doing for timberland timberland as you know is the world leader in leather shoes and uh, the boat shoe is their more iconic shoes so three years ago 
the accuracy of um, uh, launch a new boat shoe with a very flexible sole. So the idea was to communicate through an installation in the city center of Milan during Milan Design Week. And the idea was to communicate through a new lifestyle that you are actually living everyone. Not, not in the, the past two months, unluckily, but I mean, my lifestyle when in Milan is just to jump between a, a meeting to another one uh, and uh, by cycling with sharing bikes and working with my phone, with my iPad or with my laptop. So the idea of having, uh, showcasing how a, a flexible life can be connected to your feet, to your shoes, uh, turning it to, into a big sculpture was the idea of this project. So here we see the concept, and if we go on, we see a first prototype of that. That's a, uh, our two legs that are cycling in my, in my mind. And uh, here in the next slide, we're gonna see how it was looking like in Milan. Yeah, that's in uh, Corso Como. All of them are benches, you can sit on them. And in the video that we're going to see, you're gonna see how kids were playing with them uh, in very fantastic ways. Okay, let's go on with the video. Fantastic. So here you see some of the laces are made in leathers, as well as uh, the top of the of these shoes where you can sit comfortably. We have a soft area, and you see how the kids were playing throughout the day. So and then here we are uh, again in this kind of sculpture. It's very, can I, can I already jump inside of your topic? Because it's very intriguing to see how you realize an urban sculpture uh, by using one piece, which is uh, a pair of shoes, actually, because you walk in the street. And also let me make some connection at, at, at the end with uh, the shoes and the material that make the shoes, like leather, of course, because our community want to know the relation between materials and the objects and leather and the objects, no, no woven material and the objects. So which was your relation between the material and the option, object in a urban landscape? Well, um... I really like materials and experiment with materials. So, and each object has a story to tell. So uh, my work is about creating icons that communicate the story. And uh, uh, um, my scope is not to write that story. Everyone should uh, read uh, throughout the object this story. And, uh, you know, leather has been a, a material since the last uh, centuries, if not um, thousands of years, that is linked to us in a very animal and practical uh, way. So I really like to work with, uh, with um, leather. I really like to use leather because it's a long, it's a long lasting material, has a perfume, has a, it, uh, it uh, get uh, aged in a very nice way. So the product itself, it, it uh, follows what's your life and, uh, and keep a track of, uh, of what you've been doing the last uh, years. So I feel it a very warm material, very noble material, and that's why I like to work with, uh, with leather. And uh, we think the, um, I don't think just with the metro with the metropol metropolis uh, lifestyle, but even you know in know your life, it's something that is very connected as well. Because I really like to use one pair of shoes at a time, because to me, something that is like a a part of my body and shoes have to be very comfortable, uh, and I just leave them when they are very used, very really broken. So I have a very uh, emotive uh, 
emotional uh, link to leather and to shoes? So in this way, I like to uh, ask to you, and then I like to ask to also to Mirko, uh, is leather disruptive in a certain way? Because your object was disruptive, so a leather was well, made. Well, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a, a product that has been there for a thousand years. It's just a matter of how human beings use it. So, of course, can be disruptive, depends how you do it, how you use it, and what you do with it. So, I've seen incredible works made in, uh, in, uh, in leather, uh, both from, I mean, anthropological uh, and ethnographic museums. Uh, I remember a fantastic uh, exposition in uh, St. Petersburg uh, ethnographic museum about how they were using uh, leather in, uh, in the 17th, 18th century with amazing uh, uniforms. Uh, and uh, that to me was mind blowing somehow. Hmm. Interesting days. Even using the, not just leather, but even the skin of fish in a very peculiar way. So um, to me, leather is a bit all, all uh, whatever is connected to animals somehow, skins. Yeah. yeah. Mirko, do you want to jump inside of this topic? Yeah, so. the ladder, and uh, that is uh, take us uh, from a uh, thousand and thousand years, always in uh, in the life of the people, because we use uh, the ladder from um, from uh, the, the the first year of the man to to wear uh, to help us in uh, hunting, uh, uh, walking, uh, for everything. But the ladder was always our our friend, our uh, way to life. And uh, today is, uh, is coming the same because uh, in, uh, in the moment that everybody is talking about sustainable and set, we are thinking about the leather uh, like a new material. That is uh, what I think. An old material that can become uh, new because of the is a self sustainable, is a recycle, uh, is something very from the past, real. Something real. Yeah, but we like it to move you a little bit. Is, yeah. is the leather disruptive? You, that you are a leather stylist, is yeah. that disruptive? Can you be disruptive with a leather? So rebellious. So rebellious, the leather, what do you mean? Revolutionary, you mean? In Italian. Disruptive means rebellious, uh, innovative, uh, uh, yes, contemporary. We have two life to the ladder. We have uh, to to work in the future, but to, to look a little bit in the past because uh, we lose uh, walking and walking, uh, running. We lose a lot of the idea from the past. For example, some uh, really old uh, way to to tanning, uh, natural tanning, because uh, we didn't have machine. Uh, so we have to think about something old to go on because uh, um, now the law is different, the problem with the people is different. And so to revalue the ladder, we are thinking about to do, to make, I don't know, uh, digital, digital tanning that uh, because of the technical we lose uh, 10 years ago, 50, 20 years ago, uh, was in the past because that, that is not in, cannot work well in, uh, in, in a big company of shoes. Uh, so we have to, we have to look, look a little bit to the, our origin of the ladder. Then uh, there is uh, our creativity that we have to work on that ladder. So we have to mix the creativity with the old way to make ladder. That's what uh, we think to do. It's not easy because uh, um, we lose a lot of uh, hand work uh, or uh, idea to work on the ladder, color, a natural color. We lose a lot of uh, in the year because uh, the price uh, because of the value of production, uh, because of the needs of the big company, the uh, shoes and bags. Uh, but we have to go back a little, not with the creativity, because the creativity must go on, but uh, with uh, the technical the property of the ladder, we have to go back. It's crazy, yeah. but I think so. Yeah, I, I, uh, I already have. of our discussion. So in a certain way, 
We like the fact that Matteo was talking about stories behind. So Matteo, how do you connect the story and the, this origin of the letter, this kind of heritage that maybe sometimes in the manipulation can give you also some limitation? How can you react, you as a designer, that you have a very vibrant idea, but then material has some limitation, or maybe you don't see any limit? Well, I mean, so far I've been working with very good uh, craftsmen that, I mean, I like to push uh, to the borders what the feasibility of the craftsman. Uh, I mean, his techniques, uh, his ability on doing uh, on things that he was not used to do. So, I mean, if you see even the next project that we're going to see, uh, I work with the saddle companies, with craftsmen that do uh, uh, very artisanal, uh, high-end uh, boats, as well as uh, interiors of cars. And uh, to me, it's always a balance of uh, finding a trigger artisan to do better and uh, explore uh, new directions. So to me, it's, I mean, it's a very flexible material. I'm very comfortable with that. And then as Mirko, I mean, he, Mirko is a fantastic example of uh, I mean, how, you, how much creativity you can put in, uh, in the ledger. I've seen his creation online and sometimes at Linea Pelle. So I've seen his incredible, uh, I mean, uh, work, body of work, yeah. Sometimes for us it's not so easy to create because we have some limit. Our limit is that we have not the 3D. Okay, we have a relief, but it's not like to do something. And, uh, and we work for someone else. So sometimes we have the limit that are uh, to give a, the right way to the ladder. So I can uh, create everything I like to do, but then it's, then it's just for me. So I have to think about something creative, but uh, uh, working for shoes, for bags, for technical with the technical property, and so sometimes it's not so easy to create. So we have to keep something color, uh, 3D effect, uh, put together for someone else that can use that. That's our limit. We like we like uh, we are like the people that work on the theater, but on the back of the theater, not in, we are not the actors. But then, Orieta, you were seeing as you were saying as well that. Uh, leather is not a three-dimensional material, but actually is not really true because it's one of the few material that you can really apply to any 3D shape. I mean, if you think uh, to bags, shoes, uh, I mean, they are actual very complex 3D shapes. And uh, I mean, it's very hard to think any other material that can uh, create this, uh, this kind of shapes. And... Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't uh, see leather as a, 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 two, a two dimensional materials because you have so many, I mean, you can use it with different cut, very thick, uh, different thickness. You can somehow, I don't know how you call it within the leather, like a vacuum form, you, you put it in molds in a way that then it stay like with a shape. Uh, vacuum forming is more like for plastic. I, I don't know what's uh, the actual term for for um, for molding leather. But I mean, I've seen uh, even in Tuscany, in fantastic uh, craft uh, craft workshop, these stunning uh, you know uh, objects that then you see in all the catwalk of uh, Alexander McQueen or like big brands. Yeah, normally we are, for example, in the, in the world of tannery, we are lucky because uh, working and working for a lot of years now, we can work. We have our market is in shoes, bag, and the, the, another field that is really important is, uh, is uh, upholstery, furniture, uh, complements for, uh, for everything that is in the uh, in interior. And uh, that is wonderful because uh, you can. You can think about your leather not just in one direction, but also in uh, yachting and aviation, uh, in uh, every other field where there is the people that uh, work and like. And this is uh, is a uh, wonderful because uh, you can uh, image uh, another destination of the leather. 
uh, our creativity is to work in the letter like a like on a paper because the letter is like that but uh, it's uh we can put in the letter a style uh, um, geographic inspiration uh, historical inspiration uh, uh, from uh, the optical to the Bauhaus to the uh, old romance uh, everything together in a, in, a, in a letter that is wonderful because uh, no, I think that um, there don't exist another material that we can work like this. And so we can work on the letter. What is uh, fantastic that is that uh, we can work in a way that is an uh, artisanal way or industrial way. And so we don't, uh, sometimes when we do something, we don't need, we don't care about the quantity to produce. The, the, the very important to the letter is this. The, so the difference between fabric and leather is this. We have, uh, sometimes we work just for small quantity. And so we can put everything we like in the leather. In the, in the fabric in the fabric industry is different because you have to produce a lot. But the, the tannery can uh, permit you to produce just five skins or five thousand skins. But we can work with uh, all uh, all uh, the freedom we want. Yeah, I I have a question. I have a question which is mixing uh, some other question I I read now. Matteo was talking about, very technically, Matteo was talking about the reaction, uh, how, which is the reaction of the material. And yeah. Mirko is talking about different performance that you can have from leather or maybe fabrics or maybe other typology of material. So my question is to Matteo, as a designer and architect, uh, what do you think about choosing different material? If you choose leather, it's one story. If you choose polyurethane, it's another story. If you use fabric, it's another story, or no woven, because you're an experimental. So do you see some similarities or differences? Of course, it's, we didn't prepare the question. Well, but to me, I mean, leather is still a noble material. Um, uh, leather is still a noble material, so um, if uh, a prime um, client of mine, a collector, asks me uh, to design uh, a furniture, uh, for sure the first option is going to be leather, because it has to be a, a good that lasts for decades, if not for a hundred years. And uh, it's very hard to find textile and non-woven material that's so far proved to resist more than uh, 10, 15 years, both within color and uh, Duracy and uh, Martindale's. So, I mean, in leather still the stronger and uh, that uh, get uh, aged better somehow. So no doubt them, I would go for for later, if I have to think about a masterpiece that lasts uh, for a long time. Yeah, I think you touch one a very important point. The question is not, it's better this or it's better the other one. So you really need to know the opportunities and also the, the result you want to have. Because remind that the topic of our uh, interview is to talk about how to create an object that will become an icon. So to become an icon, you need to have durability. Uh, you need to have a, a, a specific performance. You need to have also something that give you the opportunity to experiment. So do you think that maybe now it's time to jump inside of showing you another types of material, another types of product. So what do you think? And, and, uh, then, and then, Orieta, uh, one more thing. In my opinion, we are passing, I mean, the last century, we are got into a, de a dematerialization era. It means that uh, human beings, in order to live in now in uh, 7 billion people, soon in 10 billion people within this world, we have to find ways to use less and less materials. It doesn't look like, because we feel very consumistic, but actually in the last uh, 100 years, we have been using less material than before. 
And uh, in order to do that, we have to dematerialize. Um, I would suggest a very interesting book by um, Andrew McAfee called uh, More From Less. And it explains how actually the only way to, um, to go into the future is to uh, put our, all our creativity and engine into use less material. And uh, we, we face a moment in which um, the material dematerialization is coming in all the industries. Um, if you think about money, there are no more money. I mean, paper money, coins. We don't have um, even uh, very basic and unpredictable thing like love is managed through dematerialization through Tinder. So even how we deal with person is dematerialized as well with a lot of product has been dematerialized. If you think all the prototype and all uh, the um, campionari, I don't know how do you say in, in English, uh, all the samples of the fashion brands, if you're talking about fashion, actually they are going into digital, they are dematerialized. So uh, looking uh, to a near future in which artificial intelligence is going to have an incredible growth in the next two, three years. And uh, uh, even a designer will uh, have fantastic tools that will implement their work, creating already uh, trend-setting designs. The designer will face uh, a moment which has to really apply his time into doing pure research, leaving machines to do the, all the operative uh, things. Uh, a few weeks ago, I've been receiving this um, algorithm in which you can, uh, I've seen it the last year about fashion, in which you bring a lot of images of different, uh, uh, like of a fashion company, and this uh, algorithm will create an entire collection based on that company, and how it would be like the next collection. Uh, the same, uh, I would never expect that would happen in architecture and in product design. And a week ago, this friend of mine sent me this, that basically you give your, uh, the plan of your house and it will uh, make it in style of Frank Lloyd Wright or Louis Kahn or Le Corbusier or uh, Frank Gehry. So very soon it's going to happen with fashion, with design, with architecture, nearly with everything. It means that we're going to produce much more creativity much more designs, but we are going to produce much less because we are going to probably are going to produce just what the people order. It means that we can rise the quality and has, um, it's probably good for made in Italy that we are good in producing small lots with a high, high quality. And so the entire distribution model and even design uh, model is going to be completely drastically changed. Yeah, Mirko, you have something to say about this? Yeah, about this uh, new vision. Uh, I think that in the last uh, 10 years, 15 years, no more, we change all the style that in uh, like in uh, in, uh, in a century and uh, in another time. Also, this last uh, six months, four months, uh, they will change the thing because. Uh, uh, we start from uh, 20 years ago with uh, a lot of creativity on, on the leather. And the model of the bag and the model of the shoes was nothing, was uh, not so important. Then there was to use leather, black leather with uh, a brand. The brand was enough. Then there was the, the opportunity for the brand to put some, uh, some um, patches uh, or something else on the leather goods. And so it was another time. Now we are in the, in the moment that the, all the big brands, they are scared about the, the world, they are scared about what can happen in uh, the next year. So uh, the problem of, uh, of for us is that to find uh, an open door for the brand. And so now we have a moment that we, we have to stay quiet and wait. Don't, uh, don't lose idea, don't lose uh, proposal, but we have to wait just for us, to wait just a moment and then we'll turn the classic into something tricky because uh, I think that uh, always uh, after a war, the people need to do to, to something fun, something uh, that can, uh, they can like, they can uh, 
discuss something. So I think that uh, it's not uh, for us, for our family, for me, it's not a big problem turning from a classic to a freak. But the problem now that it, the people is, uh, the world is different. So we cannot just put flower on the leather without uh, pay attention to the, to the test, the, the technical test or the rest. But uh, a new vision could be something to match uh, something um, something different for us because uh, uh, we have to to do something for the new people, for the, the young people, uh, for uh, the sneaker. Uh, a lot of market, a lot of part of the world that they never use leather and now they are using leather. For example, the sneaker is a, is a good way for us to, to put the leather in a, in a very young market. And so we have to think about the new people that is not a, a cowboy or an old man, but is a raptor or some uh, new people. So we have to think about something that is good for them. So it must be creativity, must be technical, must be modern and fun. Because the people, I think, I'm sure that the next year the people will, will, will want, they want something for fun, something for with uh, the mind. And so the new vision, I think, that is a good mix between color, technical test, but uh, a lot of creativity, not just the creativity, the crazy creativity, but something very steady for all the part of the world, for all the part of the people. Because of now we have to serve for all the, all the, um, the age of the people, all the age of the market, from uh, the 20 year old to the 60 year old, 70 year old, 80 year old, that now is the market. That is our vision. Yeah, let me, let me say that both of you already answered to several questions. One was creativity has to be only artistic or industrial. I think you already answered both because Matteo was talking about all the algorithm, new technologies, the way that you can create, and then you choose the right pieces and then you produce the right pieces. But also Mirko, connected the two elements. So yes, creativity in the artistic way, but why not industrial? Handmade, it's also industrial. So industrial means with technologies. So the, these two elements put a lot of connection together. So we don't see any, let me say, differences uh, uh, between using technology, using industrialization, and also using artistic and creativity. And then we have an, also another very interesting point, and I think uh, Matteo will explain you in the next project, which is storytelling, it's also to be transparent, to tell what's happened behind from the creative idea until arriving to the product. So this is our behind the scene. And let me give the voice to Matteo to explain to us what is this, let's say, surprise for you. So I really like to ride giant canoes. So my dream was to create a saddle for giant canoes. And uh, last year, I was so lucky to find a company that um, actually commissioned me to, to do a saddle. Uh, it was not for Tucano, it was actually for horses. Uh, I sometimes used for Tucanos. And um, it was a very challenging project. I have to say, uh, I've never, I don't ride horses. I used to ride horses when I was a kid, but the problem that I'm a bit narcoleptic and I was fall, always following a sleep from the horse and my mother after three times I just get off the horse uh, say better we change sport um, so I, uh, I start researching with this fantastic brand called Prestige that they commissioned me this project the entire um, you know, horse saddle and um, let's say industry, and it's a very peculiar industry. You know, it's divided the saddle, you can either find for jump or for, um, um, gosh, okay, I'm, I have a blind moment, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you later. Uh, dressage, dressage, yeah. And, um, 
And if we see the next uh, picture, I mean, if you if you write, probably you know how it is. Uh, the um, the saddle industry and the horse industry is quite boring. Very very strict to uh, an etiquette that comes from uh, decades, if not centuries, and uh, they are quite conservative. So the idea was to bring a bit of fashion uh, into this industry, uh, detailing the saddles with very peculiar letters, uh, uh, small details that can be somehow connected to the sneakers industry, the hot couture shoes or ledger bags, uh, in order to create a new segment within uh, the horse saddle uh, market. So here we have a small video that show the making of, of these saddles. <laughs> So saddles are very complex product, very two-dimensional. They have to um, mix very technical uh, uh, functions. Uh, it has to, a saddle has to be very comfortable both for the rider and for the horse. So each saddle is basically custom made on the user, I mean on the shovel, uh, on the rider and the horse. So it has to fit a, Two, two bodies, and it's a quite complex item to produce, and uh, even the comfort standards are very high, because if you ruin the, the body of a horse, uh, it's, uh, of course, you, you, you create a damage to a horse, but even a huge financial loss, because horses are quite expensive animals. Um, so, uh, Prestige is a, it's a, the leader company within saddles and they have a, a lot of technical um, systems to create the saddle within a plastic mold inside. Uh, usually they were made in uh, wood, they create instead these uh, very peculiar uh, plastic molds that you don't see here. And the idea was to create this detail, uh, here you see on the back, this uh, knitted leather with two colors that uh, make it uh, very a, a bit decorative but for the horse industry it's very somehow disruptive i would never thought that was such uh, of a high impact within the within the industry and so i really care about the small details and how the leather can turn into a very 3d object how to um, make leather round through pulling, through moldings, uh, the use of uh, different uh, foams, different cuts, uh, using uh, uh, leathers with very peculiar uh, techniques that are uh, copyrighted by uh, prestige company. And here that's a, another saddle, you see all these fringes on the back. The idea was because I like, as you, I said, to to ride uh, to canoes to create this kind of feathers. Like if you are riding a horse which is flying and uh, this you see on the back, you see this kind of flames, so that is more maleish. And then there are more um, female, uh, feminine uh, saddles. So uh, every detail that usually in a normal saddle is quite plain here, you see uh, how every detail is, a, is pretty designed. And uh, you know, in a saddle you have more than 100 pieces. So every single piece is designed and has to reason to be there. Uh, here you see all these fringes on the front and the idea is that when you are riding, all these feathers are kind of moving in a way to, even when the, the rider during a match, during a competition, is riding his horse, it has to be visible, it has to be a little sparkling. So it has to be like a dress for um, a, a, a opera ballet uh, dancer. So after being to some uh, competition of horses, of jumping, 
I saw that you couldn't see the saddle. And um, it's actually the, the connection between the rider and the horse and it should be a very important uh, tool and object that, um, uh, that connected these two bodies in a very empathic ways. So here you see the bottom where there is this plastic mold that uh, is um, to make the cockchid more soft in the, while, uh, while heating the saddle. And um, it was a very fun uh, project, uh, working with contrast of letters, tobacco with black, with, uh, with, uh, black. and uh, there I, uh, I discovered that there are more than uh, 20 different kinds of uh, leather to be used in a, in, a, in a saddle. So it's such a high degree of complexity within creating the shapes, because to create a, a very round shape, you have to use a thickness to create a more solid uh, uh, part as completely different ladder treated in a completely different way. Uh, and uh, in order not to hurt the animal or to uh, be soft in some part uh, of the, where, where you, you, you put your, your bottom. Brilliant, fantastic. Can I say fantastic? So I see Mirko already ready to show us something. Oh, so, no, no. I'm so I'm easier and simply and simpler than uh, Matteo. I'm a very flat. I'm just leather and leather. I'm, I'm a user of saddle, another kind of saddle, uh, old, old, more or less all the day, but uh, my private life. That's a different <laughs> history. No, the, our, our uh, work is totally different because we work on the paper. So we are more like a painter than uh, to do a sculpture. And so we were, our storytelling is something that changed uh, two times per year. And uh, we are very transparent because normally we use uh, an inspiration. All the year, it's easier for us to think about something. Uh, as uh, I told you before, something that is, uh, can be geographical, historical, or just a style. And uh, normally we work on that style, we develop on that style, everything can be used for the, all the different producer uh, builder. So for our shoes, that's our market, shoes, bags, and um, for And um, to be transparent, the storytelling is that, uh, now it's a little, a little bit different because in the past it was just our, our storytelling, our project, to work on our project. Now we normally, the project is always 50% in uh, from our creativity and 50% from with the clients. It's wonderful because we have to find a relation between uh, someone else that it doesn't work with us normally. And so uh, a strict connection with uh, designer, architect, producer, that is uh, it's really difficult for us because uh, you, you don't create for yourself, but you create with someone else. But it's important because uh, we make a lot of uh, a lot of uh, jumping in the future, thanks to this, because we are always, we are always uh, motivated to do something that can be, must be used, not that uh, can be used, it's totally different. And uh, the transparency means uh, then when you do something in project with the client, with a big company normally, uh, you have to be transparent, you have to be um, clear for them. You cannot have a secret, you cannot work uh, like uh, the old Italian style, this mind is mine, but you have to be open to everything, to idea, to uh, suggestion, to critical. Uh, that is important, this new way to work. For us, also for us that we produce uh, raw material, uh, it's important um, this new kind of work that we work uh, the material from zero to the shop with the directly with the client, not uh, just in our tannery, and we are the, the best of the world. For, uh, for us and for our mother. Uh, that is the, it's a big difference for us. It's, it's changed a lot. We have, a, a, um, not in the past, but now we have a big part of the company that is just uh, um, for the client because they use that part of the company more, more than me because there are more people, there are two, three, ten, probably ten guys that they work just for the client, for the client, on the project of the client. Normally, we, for example, I can uh, try or, or do something like the, the easier we have. This is, uh, is uh, the Fiesta de Sevilla, is the polka dots. 
I can produce this, I can show this to the client, and the client will start to work on this, to change it, to change the, 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 uh, the, the, the dot, uh, to change the color, to change the letter, to change the thing. That is, a, is, a, is important new because uh, to open uh, your door to the client, to work together. And so the, the transparency is a, is a law. You cannot be, uh, you cannot work in yourself in, your, in, the, in the evening in a black uh, office uh, like, uh, like in the past. Yeah, but now we are curious. What do you think about these saddles? Since you said in your private time, you use a saddle so often. <laughs> so not for me, not for my boss. Uh, we miss uh, a lot of it. We miss the horn, we miss the, the spurs, we miss uh, a lot of, we miss, uh, uh, there, there is a lot of must, they must put some, some, something else on the saddle for, for my work. Uh, are... yeah, yeah. You're right, Mirko. Um, I forgot to say at the beginning what was the aim of this uh, this saddle. No, so so the saddle is a good. Uh, no, the saddle is a good sample. Like, it's a good example about uh, the difference in the yeah. in uh, in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that is that two five thousand year old? They start from uh, wood. They then was uh, leather. There are saddles are plastic. There are, there are saddles that are synthetic. Uh, and uh, but uh, all these material, they are, they work in two different lives: the English ride, a Western ride. And and, uh, and no one is uh, less important than the other one. And so there is a design in the Western life that is there is a design in the English uh, ride. That is a. Uh, something that is incredible for the leather that can be used for a, a real old cowboy or a, a aristocratic uh, rider uh, from English. That is the application of the leather, that is, there is no limit. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell at the beginning, that's a very good point, Mirko, because once uh, I've been to this competition of jump and dressage, I thought there was very, uh, you know, boring uh, people uh, dress up. Uh, I mean, I thought everyone was around 50 or something. Instead, I discovered that the average public was actually 16 years old girl, super fancy, dressing up in Comme des Garçons with fantastic bags. And uh, it's all very young people. And somehow I was surprised how all these young people, super fancy, they end up uh, riding in a very boring suit with a very boring saddle. And I say, how comes, I mean, you are buying the more contemporary, luxurious uh, leather bags and uh, you dress in uh, off-white, uh, Hermes, uh, Louis Vuitton, whatever. And then you use for your everyday activity and even when you show off in a competition, such boring tools, such a boring companions. So the idea of starting this collection was exactly for that target, for someone that uh, doesn't find within the saddle market a fancy saddle. So I don't imagine Mirko going around with a um, Louis Vuitton bags uh, and... Uh, <laughs> And a very uh, fancy, uh, I don't know, last season um, leather goods. Um, probably yes. Uh, but the idea was exactly to target a very niche, uh, you know, um, um, people that are there are probably the bigger spender within uh, the horse industry, and no one did anything for them. And there were the big. I have to say that. Um, the prestige people really trust in that, but they at the beginning they were really uh, scared because in such a a, uh, a bourgeoisie, let's say, system, uh, these saddles uh, looks very disruptive, too much, uh, you know, glamorous or uh, fashionist. And I, if I show you my first proposal, they were super crazy for these words. So these that are really toned down. They toned down. The start, okay. is always, the start is always something to show. 
then uh, uh, you work and then uh, if we want to say we have to work on because uh, the start is a show then uh, then must be we have to put in a project uh, cost uh, use uh, easy uh, durability a lot of other other problem uh, that, but the start is always the show an idea in uh, western in english in, uh, in uh, style in uh, fun everything the start is always an idea yeah can i can i jump inside that thinking that what, what matteo is ex explaining uh, i'm totally agree and i see that some of our uh, participants are also uh, saying that they see this kind of section of the market because sometimes uh, there are so many classic items that just because it was being made for years and years in this way, nobody was thinking about a new niche. And this is what Matteo was suggesting, because niches are in face of us. Maybe we want to sell shoes and bags, and maybe people now don't want to have a new pair of shoes a new, or a new bag. They wanted to have it, but in a different lifestyle pieces. So this is also the reason why using material like leather means to be on the same high level, on the same concept, like the sneaker that Mirko was saying. So it's, if they are made in leather, they will become the best pieces for collectors. So yeah. they will become the best pieces for a collector. So what we are saying right now is not use this because it's beautiful, but use in a more disruptive way. So I really totally like this concept. Do you want to see another project, Mirko? From yeah. because I think it's it's also yeah. interesting to see another another concept of Matteo that we like it so much, where the hybrid functionality are uh, connected not only because we are talking about a material, but other element. So, Matteo, it's your part. Electric dream. So, this project was um, a research problem, uh, um, a research project commissioned by a company called Dynamica, Miko. They do not woven fabrics, and uh, mainly for automotive, they just produce for automotive. And um, the concept we came up, I mean, the big question was how we are gonna spend time in the future in our self-driving cars. Because probably we were gonna spend a lot of time in the cars. And uh, what if we have to, um, we want to play music, which kind of, music instrument will we play in the self-driving car of the future. So Electric Dreams is about a collection of musical instruments of the future made in this material that are going to be played in a self-driving car of the future. So we have a small video, I guess. So this is a collection of instruments. This is a electric, a digital violin of the future. It's, uh, all of them are working. Uh, the prototypes have been uh, traveling around the world throughout their presentation. And there were uh, uh, these music players that were playing them. This is a, a violin that you, you play, you change the octaves by rotating it because there is a gyroscope inside and you can design the wave of the sound within this touch screen. Uh, the next one, it's... Uh, Oops, this one? Yeah, here you see some, because we design as well, a collection of, um, of finishing for these materials, of pincé, of dots. Yeah, here, 
yeah, please, you can go on. I'll show you the next one. It's um, a voice distorter and loop machine. And uh, basically, you, you sing inside this machine. By rotating it, you, you do more uh, treble or bass uh, uh, sounds, uh, and you can loop them with strange, uh, I mean, you can loop your voice many times, creating a kind of symphony. Uh, then in the video, yeah, that's another is a shirt, and uh, the black areas that you see are all um, magnet are all made with uh, magnetic ink. Uh, it's a conductor that brings in base where you touch it, it will take the signal into that box in the center, which is a speaker and as well a beat machine. So you create uh, a music. You become a um, self a one-man band somehow and that was a very fun object the last object that you've seen was a, a lunch box in which we create this um snack of the future now you were is not here you, you saw it in the video in which by putting your finger the sensor will test your uh, blood pressure yeah it's by the end yeah that's it the uh, broad blood pressure, you see that dots, uh, the, the red uh, LED, will tell you which snack to eat. And all the snack have been recipe by Lorenzo Kogo, Michelin star chef based in Vicenza. And uh, so that was part of the project. And uh, all the snack are designed as well. Yeah, great. Interesting that you also incorporated the, the chef. I just want to remind for those who couldn't attend last week that we invited a chef talking about uh, real authentic so Mirko in this case I like to involve you about this project because it's very experimental how do you see the uses of leather imagine that this kind of project could be used in leather maybe not maybe Matteo will tell me no it's not possible <laughs> what well, do you of course it's different, but we use a lot of technology just for tests or just for a mark or just to try to show for the client something new. But it's not, it's not so easy a mix between the leather and something so new. We are one of the tannery that use a lot of technology, a lot of the product uh, from um, chemical product, uh, change, I don't know, that change color, uh, that change the... the um, the degree of the leather, they use a lot of product from the market in technology. But of course, the leather is leather, so is that we work just on the surface, and so we cannot change a lot of the leather. We can use the chemical product, new, different, uh, thermo, thermo tangent, uh, or uh, something that you can touch, you can feel uh, what you want, uh, or uh, something that you the good smell something the, all, all this exists on the market and we use a lot we we show a lot of this to the client but the problem that is that is a ladder we cannot uh, lose the concept of the ladder there is a limit yeah in That's a certain way i think matteo will like, will like also seeing the embedded technologies because since Leather, it's an alive material, it has a fiber that can adjust. Sometimes you can also embed technology inside. But of course, it would be nice to see this kind of experimental aspect. I don't know, Matteo, what do you think? Well, we can do more than what you think because uh, we, are, we, are really, we are really crazy in, uh, in the reward of the tannery. But the problem is that uh, at the hand, the name must be leather, not something else. That's that's the problem. That is not easy to work with technology and leather together. Yeah. So this means that uh, we like it to use this this word to uh, make a sort of a conclusion or just to to get inside the concept that heritage and innovation that are so to sometimes are very boring words. But of course, we need to take in consideration. So, or leather is classical, unconventional. So, it seems that leather can be also unconventional because uh, Matteo experiments a lot in this case, and also Tannery experiments a lot. 
How do, what do you think about this kind of unconventional in the near future to keep the beauty of the ladder? Keep it. Remind the ladder is ladder. Difficult. For me or for me, Carl? For both, for both. I can start, then I stop. Uh, to me, <laughs> my production, to my creation, the ladder is just unconventional. Sometimes it can be classic, but sometimes. The, the classic ladder is uh, something that uh, always exists. Uh, take us from the past. It's brown, black, red, black, white. All the rest must be or is unconventional. When you work on the ladder, when uh, you emboss the ladder, when uh, you paint on the ladder, when uh, you have to do something on the ladder, when you, when you want to put a, a texture, uh, an optical texture, or uh, something that is not exactly from the ladder, the ladder immediately becomes unconventional. That uh, was a thing. The, the ladder must be unconventional. The classic ladder, the market of the classic ladder is a, is a normal market that uh, Go, 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 go in uh, his private uh, life in the street. But if uh, we work just on the unconventional ladder and the, the classic ladder, the conventional ladder is what uh, give us uh, the, the, just, uh, the work, just the business, the big business, but uh, all the rest of the ladder, you have to something unconventional always to show, to, to propose, uh, and to work on with the new project. That's what I think. So, unconventional. Yeah. And for Matteo? Um, um, I don't know, everything can be uh, uh, conventional or unconventional. It's a, just a matter of how you see it. Um, I think every material ladder as well has, can have a, can be used in any way. Uh, probably ladder in a few years is not going to be the ladder that uh, is probably is not going to be produced. The, the, the raw material as is produced today, who knows? You know, uh, uh, probably it's going to be created in lab and then the tannery stay the same or the rest stay the same. And it's not actually coming from a real animal, who knows? So. Uh, that implies a, a series of um, of uh, question of tech of the change of uh, of uh, in the way even how how I mean think we are now thinking about a straight ladder probably in five years you can have the ladders in it will uh, grow and it will the raw material is going to be in whatever shape you like. You know, it's uh, so. Um, to me, I'm quite open to any kind of this vision, and to me, that could be a, a, a not a disruptive, but to quite uh, maybe uh, near future utopia. Yeah, you like it to put the elements together. What we what we like to say is that now on we are in 2020, yeah. so. We have materials that have a great power yeah. and a great uh, opportunity. Yeah. Letter can be whatever we shape it. Yeah. Uh, I have last question, but it's just because I think everybody are attracted to read the book that mm -hmm. Matteo suggests. So can I ask you to repeat us one uh, more? I wrote it in the chat. Uh, is okay. Okay. more more from less by andrew mcafee and uh, i think it's very interesting because it explains the story of materials and how somehow in every stage of human history we have always been malthusian uh, mal uh, malthusiast which has a very negative uh, meaning and it explains actually what, um, what's the Malthusian theory, which means that every time, I mean, since the 14th century, we're thinking that uh, with every generation, the population is doubling, but the resources cannot double. So there is no way since the 18th century that the human being could grow in terms of population without uh, suffering of famine after a few decades. And after 18th century, 1880, 
uh, that didn't happen anymore. So um, human beings can grow in population and uh, somehow we found a way to feed everyone because throughout these years, the use of material was less and less. If you think about a, a can, like an aluminum can or a steel can, in the 50, was the, the weight of metal was 60 grams. Now it's nearly five grams. So it degrees of 11 times nearly. So the same for leather. Uh, uh, probably in the near future, we're gonna find new way of making it. Of, uh, of tanning it and uh, many issues, even here I see many questions about uh, sustainability or uh, we are not gonna see them because the way we produce, we treat it, it's gonna be completely different. And uh, so I'm very optimistic about that. And I think uh, even in terms of shapes, of usage, of ethical, uh, uh, I think we are, it, it's, everything is changing very rapidly. If you think that 10 years ago, uh, we had uh, 10 objects or maybe 50 objects that had been replaced by this thing. And uh, now they don't exist anymore. It doesn't mean uh, all the work related to this industry are gonna disappear. Probably are gonna increase and are gonna be much more interesting. Thank you for this kind of uh, consideration and thank you for also, I, I see me as well, one of the latest question. Think about the leather, it's sustainable starting from the really beginning. So I, I want to just say that after a person a piece of meat, in all of the process of tanning, we have so many elements like scratches, scraps, that could be transformed into powder, into fringes, into liquid, into many other typology. So let me think that for sure, listening you both, we can see that keep going with uh, technology because we can also take out other elements from the raw material and leather is not only the flat material but we can take in consideration all the recycling elements during the process so wow so i just need to close because uh, i think our participants even if i see that they never went out so they still keep going to listening us so thank you so much to our community as most important thanks so much to Matteo and to Mirko because you gave us your uh, opinion and what's going on is let's stay tuned in the next future if you have other creation artistic ideas let's share with our community I'm very pleased thank you so much thank you, Rita. all the participants uh, feel free to contact to contact me through instagram email phone whatever i'm very happy if you contact me anytime me and as well. Well. <laughs> Alinea Pelle as well. yeah. grazie grazie mirko grazie community thank you, thank you. Thank you to me thank you